Hi, I'm Scott Quinnell, your host for the Smeg, 40 Guide to the UK. Smeg is an Italian brand that wants to celebrate all the diversity in all our regions. Together, we've been already to Cornwall and Devon. But wait, we are off to Somerset this week. I managed to get Claire and Alice, our home economists here at Smeg, out of the kitchen once more. Enjoy this one, it's a cracker. brings us to Bath, a wonderful city. I know it more for the rugby that I used to play here, but it's more than that. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's where Bridgerton was actually filmed. I felt like dressing up today, huh? I tell you. It's an incredible city. Jane Austen actually wrote about, here we go, the Bath Bun. And that's why we're here today. There's more than one recipe for the Bath Bun. I'll tell us all about it. So it's an amazing sweet treat. It's an enriched bun with milk and sugar, and they actually even put sometimes a sugar cube into the dough before it bakes. Oh, well, that's what we're going to in store for this episode. I feel a sugar rush coming on. Should we go and do it? Let's. Come on then. Well, here we are in the Bath Bun tea shop, and I've got Lawrence, the owner, and the chef. Thank you so much for having us. That's right, my pleasure. Welcome to the Bath Bun. Thank you. Now, please tell us all about this delicious delight. Well, it goes back some hundred years or so, back to 1690-something, when uh, a gentleman from Cornwall uh, arrived in Bath as a physician named Dr. Oliver. And he became uh, one of the very key people in Bath. But you, you did find something interesting, yeah? I did. We did find in a little wainscot um, a very old, very charcoal piece of looked like bread, and it unfortunately disintegrated as we touched it. And it definitely was a, a Bath bun. I would like to believe it was definitely one of the possibly bath, the, the original, oldest Bath bun the oldest in bath history. Bun that disintegrated in my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you just saw it going through. Just saw it yeah, oh, no. turn to dust. Wow. So Dr. Oliver actually des uh, designed and, 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 he and came he, up with a bath bun. Yeah, he came to Bath um, because of the, of, of the waters here. Um, and during Georgian periods, people, um, people would come down to Bath. It wasn't like the trips we have this over a weekend now. People would come down for three, four, five weeks, sometimes months, and take in the waters and enjoy the, the finery that Bath had to provide. And because of the hot springs and that, it was more of a convalescence, wasn't it? If somebody wasn't feeling great, they'd come down here and then they'd spend three months just to feel better. Just to feel, yeah. Do you think maybe, okay, the water's important, right? Do you think a lot of that had to do with the Bath Bun? It's certainly, it's, it certainly as histories come through, definitely the bath bun had an influence because Dr. Oliver provided to all his patients bath buns on a daily basis. Wow. Um, they were full of sugar, as they still are today. They have a nice, beautiful sugar cube in them. And uh, the ladies used to arrive with nice 14 inch waist, waistlines as they did in those days and, and leave with 18 inch waistlines, <laughs> but as high as kites. They went back <laughs> to London. Because of sugar, by the way. Yeah. Because of the sugar. Because of the sugar. Proper sugar rush then. Yeah, proper sugar rushes, and uh, would leave Bath feeling amazing and looking forward to the next trip the following wow. year. And that repeated itself year over year. And I think that's probably one of the, re the big reasons why Bath is still so popular today, is that. And we're very lucky here in Bath that we've got two amazing buns. Uh, the Bath Bun and the Sally Lamb Bun. Most cities have two football teams. We've got two buns. So what we do is ferment the dough beforehand and we bring it up um, till it's just at its maximum. Any, any longer it starts to decline. So when it's at its maximum... See, this, this, these are the secrets of the trade because absolutely. when do you know it's at its maximum unless you do it every day? I could tell you that's a secret. Uh, well, it's all a secret <laughs> see, scientific see? process. Oh. We're going to attempt this a little bit later, but, um, but we're trying to get all of the top tips that we can today. Oh. So, the, so when it gets to that point, that's when you, you put it into your bowl with yeah. all, your, all your other ingredients. Mm. And then um, you roll it out, cut it, place the, the sugar on the top, 
and as it bakes, the sugar will bake itself into the wow. bottom. Because we like to think that it's softer at the bottom than it is at the top. Mm. So, um, and then the sugar um, remains at the bottom. That's the secret of the bath bun that people so you've bite got into. A beautiful sugary base. And then I've seen so many adaptations of you know recipes online. People doing their own takes of things. Caraway seeds, orange peel yeah. within the bun. You have to remember that it is, it is several year, hundred years years old. We've stuck as closely yeah. to the real recipe as we can. But over a period of time, people have changed their tastes. Definitely. And also baking methods have changed. Of course. I've seen it with orange and lemon zest. Um, yeah. We've seen it with um, caraway seeds, you said. So um, we try to stick to as much to the original recipe as we can. All of them are very good. Um, yeah. This is probably the lightest of all the bakes. I mean, it's amazing. Do you use anything like steam to, to cook things? No, no, they, that, no, they cook. That's surprising. So, um, they're the last bake of the day. So after after all the breads mm. and the artisan loaves have been cooked, as the as the as the ovens are cooling down, that's when we put the bath mm. buns in. I know why you do them as the last bake of the day. If you did these as the first bake of the day, <laughs> there'd be nothing to sell. There would literally be nothing to sell. They'd been in there, a couple of hours, okay, I'll do my sourdough now. Oh, and you'd, I'd have eaten a lot. I'd have eaten a lot. How many of them do you get a year then? A year? We probably sell, here in the tea shop, a thousand a week. A wow. Year. Yeah. Do you do them all sitting in? Do you do, you do them to take no, away? No, do a lot, a lot. It's, it, I would say it's probably... 70% of people eat in, yeah. and then the other the other 30, maybe 40% of people take away. Wow. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we do an awful lot. I think people enjoy them now with um, clotted cream. Oh, yeah. interesting. So, um, just like you would have a cream tea, yeah. we have now a, a, a bath bun cream tea. Wow. And people enjoy it with jam and, and clotted cream. Delicious. Do you know how to make clotted cream? No. Well, look at our episode last week. Absolute banging. Right. Absolute banging. I tell you, what, it was absolutely fantastic. If you missed it, go back and look at next week and you can eat it when you make these this week. That's what we do here on the podcast. <laughs> but it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. We're going to see Sally Lunn. Yeah. How do they differ so much? Well, the Sally Lunn is, um, emulates obviously from a French refugee. So it's, the baking was very different. Yeah. Mm. So it's more like a brioche. And I would say that would be served. Um, with soups or um, with kind of with um, spicy kind of foods, whereas this is very much a, a, a tea time treat. Yeah. Yes, it's, very it's sweet. Very sweet. Very you delicate. Enjoy it with a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, maybe in between a meal or you know, as as a, as a as an after meal as you as you would. We're enjoying that. Well, can I just say the two absolutely wonderful buns. I know we talk about the rivalry, but it's it's a friendly rivalry. It is isn't very it? much so. And yeah. you work together. And yeah. you're so close as well in proximity. Yeah. I mean, Sally Lunds, I believe, is just up it's, the road. Yes, that's right. Just a few uh, few yards away, really. But the whole history of the area is amazing. You know, we've uh, from the very first Frankenstein book written by Mary Shelley delivered next door. Wow to um, Admiral Nelson when he had his eye um, shot in the, in the pub across the road at the Crystal Palace, through to Jane Austen's, one of Jane Austen's aunt who lived in the house here. So the whole area is steeped in history. Um, and- Keep on talking, I haven't finished the bun yet. <laughs> <laughs> and Ralph Allen's uh, first post office is right next door. So, right, so um, when, you, when you visit Bath- All within a few meters. Bath, yeah, when you visit Bath and you see the Roman Bath and yeah. you see the beautiful abbey within a few meters you're right in the, in the center of Bath's most historic quarter. gosh how fantastic that's absolutely incredible it is amazing uh, like we said many times before i don't think you'll be able to replicate these at home so we'll give it a go later on in the podcast but if you are coming it's definitely a place you want to come to the bath fun is here lawrence is the owner and the chef say hello to him when you come through and thank you so much for having That's us right. it's absolutely You're very fantastic welcome. thank You're you so very much welcome. we look forward to welcoming all our new future guests Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Well, there we are. That's the Bath Bun. But there is another bun in Bath, and that is Sally Lunds. Are you looking forward to this? I really am, Scott. And to be quite honest with you, I have no idea what the difference is. So let's go and find out. Look at the queue. Come on, we'll have to get to the back. Are you all for Sally Lunds? We're all queuing. We're all queuing. Well, we're finally here. 
Sally Lennon's Tea Room and Museum. And Chrissy is here. Thank you so much for inviting us. Now you're the museum curator. Yes, I am. Tell us about Sally Lennon. So, Sally Lum was a French Huguenot refugee who came here around about 1680 and worked for the baker who's current, who was currently on site and brought with her the recipe for the Sally Lum, which is now called the Sally Lum bun. <laughs> so, so, a lot of buns going on in Bath. Can yes. you tell me the main difference between the Bath bun and the Sally Lum? Because I'm sure there are many. Yeah, well, the Sally Lum bun is an enriched dough French celebration bread, a bit like a brioche but you can do sweet or savoury toppings on it. So it's not mm. quite as sweet as a brioche. The bath bun's a lot smaller it's than the Sally Lennon. A lot smaller, Lennon. yes. Well, they yeah. say size does matter, but does well, it? I don't think so, really. I think they, I mean, they send people here, we send people there. Oh, so it's a friendly oh, competitive. Oh, of course, yeah, because I mean, a lot of people like to buy both. Really simple ingredients, it's flour, yeast, milk, Salt and a bit of sugar. Sugar, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Brilliant, wow. And I think it's French flour that they use because obviously the French mill their flour be much better than the. the oh, interesting. Very fine, very make fine, it which smoother. makes it soft. Lovely. Yeah. Can we go see where the magic used to happen? Of course you can. If you like to follow me, we'll go downstairs. Yeah. Thank you very much. We're in Sutherland, and this gives me an idea. It's a rugby ball shape. It's actually got the stitching in there. Look. I know it was for meat, but maybe I'll sort some out later in the programme. So if you'd like to come with me, I'll show you our bakery and, um, and, uh, and our Roman remains and things like that down here. Wonderful. OK, Chrissy. mind your head. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking it's not great, OK? <laughs> no, you might have a problem going down here. <laughs> come on up. Oh. Oh, I tell you what, this isn't built oh, for big rugby players. No. <laughs> Hang on, what's that? It's a pig. The pigs in Bath are really, really important. Without the pigs, we wouldn't have the what we've got today. So, there was supposedly an Iron Age prince called Bladed. Right. And he travelled a lot, came back to his tribe who were living somewhere around on the side of the hills yeah. in Bath because obviously Bath would have been a bit of a hot bog by then because the water comes out of the ground yeah. and it would have created a warm oh, bog. Yeah. So the people Great lived up. Pigs. Yeah. Well they had the pigs in the valley right. sort of thing. Anyway he came back from his travels with a seriously bad skin disease. Now they say it was leprosy but we all know leprosy is curable. Yeah. You cannot cure it. So it was probably something like scabies or something like that and the people wouldn't let him come and live in the village so they said to him well we don't want to throw you away because you're the chieftain's son <laughs> we'll let you live in the valley with the pigs now the pigs skin is very similar to our skin they catch the same diseases as us so the pigs caught the scabies or something and the pigs being sensible went and laid in the hot bog and our hot bog its mineral water is heaving yeah so they got better and Bladed noticed this and he went and laid in the hot bog and he got better. So, and then the Romans came along in 4 AD and went, oh look, hot bog, water, we'll build a bath. Named it Aquae Sulis, the rest is history. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. So really, he was living in the most expensive bit of bath. Yes, ever. Before there ever was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank God for those pigs, eh? Yeah, yeah, they all got well. That's wonderful. Yeah. So. This is the original bakery up until about the 1700s when it became a Georgian. And this is Georgian behind. So Georgian range, all different ovens, all different heats for cooking. So we're quite lucky that we have actually still got our kitchen, that they, the Georgians decided to put the kitchen down here rather so, than upstairs. It's absolutely incredible. Um, when you think about it, it's boiling, you know, it's boiling here today. Yeah. Can you imagine it with those fires on? Because there's one, two, three, there's the enclosed, there's the open fire, there's the big hearth uh, in the middle uh, of the room, there's the bun oven at the back, all the buns are proving over the right-hand side uh, over there. Sally, she must have been absolutely roasting uh, in here. And it's incredible because the, the bath over the years has really grown because now we're in the cellar 
Yeah. This used to be floor um, level. Street level. But over the other side was the original Roman yep. part of the building as well. Roman and medieval as well. Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. So that part over there was, am I correct in thinking, the 1400s? So everything underneath that is pre-1400, yeah. So we are in the oldest house in Bath. Probably. <laughs> probably the well, oldest. Probably house. definitely the oldest. <laughs> well, the oldest one that we've been to. The, that, the, it would be the only one that's been actually excavated. There probably are a few others in this row, but they're buried underneath their foundations. Interesting. Well, they yeah. haven't got Sally Lund's buns. How, how many uh, actually would they have made here a day? How many do you think Sally would have actually made bun wise? I know that they were very popular in the Georgian times. They took them down to what was called Spring Gardens, yeah. which is now Sydney Gardens, and they used to have them in the mornings. Mostly landed gentry, because the poor people wouldn't have been able to afford yeah. them. I tell you what, now here, can we please have a look at the original Roman part of the house? You can. Fo we'll follow you. Okay then, if you'd like to come this way. So Chrissy, this is the old part, and you can, we can see one, two, three, four different levels. Seven there are down Seven. there. Seven. Seven levels. I can't count that, eh? Well, so, that would have been the original point of the house. It would have been, yes. So the Roman level is right down where the, um, the, the Roman centurion is. Yeah. And down there they found roof tiles, um, some tesserae, um, some simian pottery ware and things like that. So they knew that there was a building on site, obviously wow. on the way to the temple, because yeah. the temple is over there. And all built upon it. And then afterwards, there was a gap of building between the Romans leaving and obviously around about nine, ten hundred. This was monastery at that time. Right. And then they started building the medieval floors from about, I'm not sure, ten the, there's a little short bit where the Roman con uh, Norman conquests are, yeah. so about 200 years or so, and then they would have started building brick-built houses again. Yeah, yeah. it's incredible, man. Yeah, it? yeah, it is. Absolutely so, amazing. In this one little bakery, you've got literally... Right the way down to the Roman of, level, 4 thousands, AD. Thousands of years of, <laughs> yeah. of history. 2,000, just about, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That's quite all right. And if you want to have a quick look at the... We've also got some finds in here as well. And speaking of finds, am I correct in thinking that something was found under... Was it a floorboard when this place was... It's a little excavated? cupboard. They say it was a little cupboard over a fireplace upstairs on the ground floor restaurant. All right. And what was it? Uh, the, the recipe, it's now currently hanging on the owner's wall in his house. Oh, wow. Oh, they, they found the, the They have recipe got a for... parchment recipe, yeah. I've never seen it myself personally, but I believe that uh, the only way to get it is to buy the house. Is it? Yeah. Wow, so when they bought the house, they opened this little cupboard. Well, actually, it was pre-owned before our current owner had it. His mother and father had it. Oh. So in the 70s, when they opened it as a tea house... They had the building, and he bought it off of his mother and father. Wow! Yeah. Oh wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Recipe included. In Recipe these. included. There yeah. wasn't an old bun there as well, was there? Ah uh, no, I don't think so. No, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no. The recipe the, yeah. good So, if you get a lottery win, I think you need to have a big one to buy this house. I can imagine. I don't think he'd sell it to you cheap. <laughs> no, not with this history. That's I tell, for sure. I tell you what, though, I think we'll take a, a, a Sally Lynn bun back if we can't buy the house. We buy a bun. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll give you a bun, so that's okay. Ah, Chrissy, thank you so much that's for showing us right. around today. That's all right. It's you're a wonderful story. Uh, and if you're in Bath, then get down here. It's absolutely incredible. Come and see the history of the place, but more importantly, taste the history. It's fantastic. Here we are in Cooper's Home Appliances, right in the centre of Bath, and we have come here to do our own Bath buns. We've taken Lawrence's tips on board, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have indeed, all of his top tips. We're going to attempt to make a beautiful, fluffy, sweet Bath bun. Now, Ooh. he warned us it was going to be hard, mm. and we probably wouldn't be able to replicate it, but we're going to give it our best shot. Okay, so what we're going to start off by doing is 
putting in the flour and softened butter into our stand mixer bowl. Okay. So if you fancy getting the butter there, Scott. Yep. Um, so this is 450 grams of plain flour and that's 115 grams Ooh. of really soft butter. Thank Lovely. you. Thank you. And I'm going to pop that into the mixer and then we're going to make breadcrumbs. And that is something that, Scott, I'm sure you've seen quite a bit of recently. We've done this a bit, haven't we? It, we it have. is, it, it's the staple of most of the recipes we've done over the last couple of weeks, isn't it? Yeah, doughs, pastries, breads, all that kind of thing, when they're, they've got a bit of sweetness to them and enrichment. It's, it's usually this method. So I'm going to get that mixing and the butter's going to distribute itself through the flour so we're going to have lovely breadcrumb texture and then we can add the rest of the ingredients. And that's actually the mixing one. So what, what do they call that? Yeah, so that's the beater attachment. The beater. So we don't want the dough hook yet but we're going to eventually transfer it to the dough hook okay. to form our dough. Okay, so that's looking good. So I'm going to turn that off and we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. So we're going to carry on adding the dry okay. ingredients here. We've got the yeast and the salt. Okay, um, oh. Now what's our top I've, tip here? I've learned this, I've learned this. You've got to put the yeast on one side. Yeah. And you've got to put the salt on the other side. Yeah. And that's because you don't want to mix the two because they start fighting each other. They do indeed. Yeah, so you'll deactivate the yeast. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll it all on yeah. this, this that's, that's, what, that's what I meant to say. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> I'm adding in four tablespoons of caster sugar. Um, and that's it for now because we're just going to mix this up um, to make sure those are evenly distributed and then we'll add our liquids. So a really gentle combine together. It doesn't need long at all, just until all of that um, yeast and sugar and salt has... So is that yeast and salt now fighting in there? So no, because it's not sat on top of one another. Oh, okay. They're not really activating um, against themselves. It's only when you get them directly touching oh, right, that okay. it stops it from working. Eggs? So yes, please. How many? Um, so we need two eggs. So you can crack Ooh. them straight in. Excellent. See, that's how I'm allowed to do it at all. <laughs> Shall I show you what the, what the, what the chefs do it, right? So it's just, they, they just go... I'm a little bit nervous for this. And they crack it and they go... We'll ignore the bit of shell. Nearly, nearly, <laughs> nearly tiny bit of shell. That's all it was. That was pretty good, though. I've seen them do it on TV. I've no, always wanted to do that it. That was very good. And now you, you're doing it yourself. I'm not allowed to do that at all. So now I'm adding in um, about 300 millilitres of milk um, and I've got a nice little line on my milk carton here so I know just how much to do. Oh, I was about um, to say, because that's the first time you is, have not measured I know, or weighed anything. I know, when we're baking, it's really important to get the weights correct. Uh, when you're cooking, it's actually fine. You can be a bit more experimental and uh, kind of just go with a pinch of this, pinch of that as you fancy it. But with baking, one of the key things to get right is weights and measures. Mm. Okay. Otherwise, you're in for a disaster. That's why I make curries, mainly. Because <laughs> they're simple to make and you can make them to your taste. Yes. So I'm still using the beater attachment here until it's combined, and then I'm gonna switch it out for the dough hook to knead. Okay. So that's mixing all of the wet ingredients together at this point. Um, and the second it pulls that into a little bit of a wet sticky dough, we're ready to go. And that is something about this dough that's going to be very different. Yeah. It's not going to look like a bread dough that pulls together in a big ball. It's going to be really, really sticky. And the purpose of that is we get a lovely, light, bouncy bun. It does. It is. It is very, very different to the ones we've done in the last couple of weeks. It is very much so. It's almost like um, a really wet shoe pastry in a way. So I'm just going to switch this out shoe here. Shoe pastry. Yeah. It's, a, you know, a bit like um, a, a chocolate eclair. Oh, that oh yes. kind of pastry, yeah, oh, it's very different. Right, okay. I'm just going to now knead that for about five minutes. Um, now, this would be quite difficult to knead by hand because it's such a sticky dough. You'd need quite a bit of flour on the work surface. But with that flour there, would dry it out, would it? Um, it would a touch, but we are going to add, you know, a little bit of extra flour when we come to roll them later. So yeah. it's fine to add just a, a touch more flour. So we'll let that knead and we'll see you back when we're done kneading. Okay, so this has had a good amount of time kneading. And as you can see, it's still 
pretty sticky, which yeah. is what we want. Um, it's, it's, fallen, it's fallen off the hook, though. That's, it that's is, a good it's sign. It's fallen though. off the hook, and we've got a little bit of spring back as well. Lovely. So that means that we've developed some of that lovely gluten that we're looking for from the flour. And I'm going to pull up the head here, and we've got our dough ready to prove. Ooh, lovely. So... We've got our lovely still sticky dough, which Perfect. is exactly what we want, um, but it does have a bit of a spring back. So I'm just going to, with my fingers, pull it into our proving bowl, and we should have a beautiful, lovely, kind of almost brioche looking dough here. So again, nice and sticky, and that is ready to go into the oven. So on our oven, we've got a proving function, which is about 40 degrees. Um, but if you've got an airing cupboard or an area near a radiator, that's perfect. So just above room temperature would be really nice. Or stick it out the back in this then. Very true. It's boiling. a lovely sunny day here. Um, and we're, so we're looking for anywhere between one to two hours until it's doubled in size. Scott, if you wouldn't mind putting on the tea towel, because my hand's a little bit sticky here. Um, and then the oven is already preheated, ready to go. It's, not, it's never going to be hot at 40 degrees. It's not. Though. You can still touch it and pull it out without any oven gloves because it's a really lovely, gentle temperature. Um, if it's any hotter than 40 degrees, it won't rise very well and it'll probably kill the yeast. So. I, know, I know. Do you like? Do you want me to clean up before I we start? I love you too, Scott. There Thank you for asking. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> got, got him well trained. Have Right, we've had an hour and a half, about an hour and a half. Yeah, until it's roughly doubled in size, a lovely, soft, warm place for it to get lots of air into it. Should we have a look? Yeah, let's. Scott's taking it out of the oven now. It's, oh, it's just, it's just, it's, it's not hot, but it's yeah, just warm. Yeah, just, it's just warm. Oh, so perfect. we've got our lovely, still sticky dough. So I am going to add a touch of flour to the top of it here before we start handling it. And I'm also gonna get a bit of flour on my hands too, and I think you should too, Scott, um, because we're both gonna be rolling. Oh. And believe it or not, not with a rolling pin, we're gonna be rolling these into balls. What? So for bath buns, we want them to be lovely and round. Oh, uh, okay. And then we're also going to put a sugar cube into the base of them. Are we? I know. Uh, so the idea is that these bake um, with the sugar cube in the bottom, they sink to the base and they melt and caramelise in the bottom oh, of the right, bun. Okay. So how, how, big, how big are we taking? I would say smaller than a tennis ball, bigger than a golf ball. All oh, right, good good analogy. Yeah, so take, take your bit of dough. Um, again, you're going to need that bit of flour just to help you handle it because of the stickiness. So then roll it into a bit of a ball and then in the center pop a sugar cube and then seal it up because when when you actually eat one they're at the bottom are they they are yeah exactly do they sink to the bottom then? they do so when we pop these on the tray now we're actually going to leave them to prove okay for even more time and that allows them to rise get extra fluffy and doughy um but also that sugar cube's going to sink which is exactly what we want Right, lovely. So let's get rolling. And then we also are going to top these with sugar a little bit later on too. So we've got sugar everywhere in these buns and that's what makes them so absolutely delicious. And as Lawrence was saying, addictive as well. So when all of those patients came to bath. What's right? Why, why is it sticking to my hands? Get more flour, Scott. More I'm not flour. Very, but loads of flour on there. <laughs> it's the stickiest dough. Should, you, you, have, should you have. Um, a warm heart and cold hands. Exactly. Oh no, that was very, very sticky. Yeah, it's a really sticky dough, but quite fun to play with. So it would be a really good one for children to get involved with, I think. Yeah, you could get the kids involved with this, couldn't you? Yeah. Well, you, you got me involved, so. Yeah, very true. Proves pro, pro, <laughs> it right. Okay, so we're oh. going to. Right, give that a good roll. What's that look like? You've done a kind of almost sausage oval shape. What have you got going on there, Scott? Like a rugby ball, eh? It's a rugby ball. <laughs> not a tennis ball, it's not a cricket ball. <laughs> I decided to go for a rugby ball shape. Well, we couldn't be in Bath without a bit of rugby, could we? No, played you a few times. Okay, so we're putting about, I would say, nine little balls onto this, um, this baking sheet here. And then we're going to put a tea towel over the top and prove it again for about half an hour this time. So they really, really double, get nice and fluffy. Okay. Great. So, should we get them into proof? Yep. So, tea towel over the top again. Tea towel on. Back exactly the same oven. timings yep. and everything. So, timings, we're just going for half an hour this time, and they should double in size once more. Um, and then they're ready to bake. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to put them in at about 200 degrees for 15 minutes and then take them out of the oven perfect and we're going to glaze them after that so when we come back yeah we will have perfect bath rolls yes with just one extra step at the end to make them even more special oh, happy days okay so they've been in the oven they're beautifully golden and i think we're ready to do our glaze right so i'm gonna pop my oven, oven gloves on because this is gonna be hot oh it is warm yeah so get these out here pop them back in and we're ready now to top oh, look at those bad boys they i mean they are huge and that's down to the proving and then of course they're rising during the baking as well so we're going to crack an egg to get a nice uh, base for our topping to stick to lovely and i've got so what, what so we, we've got sugar cubes here so what we're going to do is we're going to crumble a few sugar cubes on top to make them extra crunchy and sweet Shall I break a beautiful them glaze yes please so going to spread a bit of this egg wash over every single one to help them stick um, and this is a, another one of Lawrence's special tips here and um, there are lots of different you know ways of doing this whether you use milk whether you some people use an egg wash with um, egg uh, watered down with a bit of milk but we're just going for straight egg wash and baking them for another five minutes with this topping on to mm. make sure it gets really nice and crispy. So I'm just gonna go over all of these with egg wash and then Lovely. Scott, you are crumbling some sugar cubes, aren't yes. you there? I'll so hopefully down. some are ready to go. And ideally we actually want them to be different sizes. We want some really nice grains of sugar on the top, but we also want some pretty big chunks too to give us that lovely variation in texture. So whenever you're ready, you can sprinkle those on. Can I sprinkle away? Sprinkle away. Is it, I'm looking at those, is it just, just in the middle? Uh, just, just in the middle, and if some oh, fall quite... to the sides, that's also what we want as well. And Lawrence did say, for any big bits, we can actually just press them straight on. So any big bits that fall, you know, really get them on there. Oh, look at that. Well, These could, are going to be beautiful. I could crush a grape. Oh, look I'll at that. Back, eh? <laughs> is that enough? Oh, that, now that's going to give us a sugar rush there, Scott. Perfect. So we're going to pop these back in the oven at the same temperature um, for five minutes, and that should be beautiful. Don't lick your fingers at home. I'm going to have to wash my hands, though. No, food safety first. <laughs> Just too nice. Right, it's that time. It's the best time. We Get can smell taste. them. I'm excited. Okay, so... We've had an extra five minutes in the oven, and here oh. they are. Oh, I smell. Look at those. So we've got a bit of caramelization on that sugar there. Absolutely beautiful. And these should be quite warm. Oh, but look, soft, bouncy. I don't know about you, Scott, but oh, I, look at I, that one. I really want to try these. It's like a pillow. Look at that. And that's the beauty of having a really sticky dough. Do it, we have to leave these? Do we have to leave these cool down? I think we could just tuck in. Uh, I don't know about you. I think so. <laughs> How hot do you think it is? Um, let's, let's give it a go. Go on, sticky dough. That's why I use it. That is. So sticky dough gives us this really, I mean, alongside the proving process. Oh. Look at that beautiful fluffy butt. That now that is so oh, that is so hot to touch. But I I really you know want to try this. Just come out the oven. Oh. Yeah, you know what, Scott? That's probably giving it away, isn't it? A little bit. I'm gonna get one with a good bit of sugar on here. Oh. He's gone straight in with the rugby ball. Oh, <laughs> mm. Mm. That's lovely. Really you know what? I'm not surprised. The ladies in Bath got addicted to this when they came and. Uh, came here for their their doctor i gotta say though the sugar on the top absolutely makes it oh and if i if i can find the sugar cube inside it's all uh, beautifully melted now i don't put that in my mouth now but wow oh i tell you what those Ooh. are amazing i cannot wait to polish mm. these off oh, once yeah. they've cooled down absolutely beautiful but i suppose it's time uh, time for it clear up now yeah absolutely totally Right, mm. I'll leave you to that. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. See you after. Where are you off to? I got a really, really, really important uh, meeting uh, in Bath, so uh, I'll leave you now. I'll leave you now. See you later. See you. 
All right, well, uh, Scott's off, so I guess I've got these buns to myself and do a bit of clearing up then. Um, I suppose we'll catch up with Scott later, wherever he is. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, that's where you went, eh, then, Scott? We did think I'd come all this way to Bath and not go to the Roman Baths, did you? Well, that was so much fun. As you can tell, I've got a bit of a sugar rush. You tell us if you enjoyed it. Or share your bath buns or Sally Lunds. See how they come out of the oven. Send us a photo or subscribe now to the channel. You can also get us on Instagram, smeg underscore UK, or at Facebook, smeg UK. Wow, I think I'm coming down. See you next time.